However, uh, we have also uh, listened to her story that even if, if they planted trees, there were problems that uh, resulted from, the, uh, from that initiative. No? And uh, that where she um, somehow uh, thought of um, uh, solving the, the problem of um, scarce water with um, the technology of rainwater um, harvesting. No? So um, I, I was just amazed by the thought that uh, somehow we have problems, we have some challenges in our own respective work, and uh, we are able, and in her case, she was able to adapt um, solutions to uh, changing problems. So uh, I think if I may, if I may be allowed, no, I will, um, I'm, I'm, a legal I'm in a legal profession, and I'm not a technical person, uh, but as I was, uh, we had some earlier talks about her work, and uh, maybe my question would be more of a human, of more of human interest. No, uh, she was able to mobilize communities, but I'm, maybe I'm, I would be more interested in how uh, those technologies, particularly rainwater um, harvesting technology, how it interplays with uh, the communities um, on field, no? and how, uh, in your experience, Dr. Salas, how are you able to? Um, uh, somehow convince or mobilize your communities in somehow understanding and appreciating that this particular technology works for us and this is for our benefit, this is for the benefit of the environment. That's one. And maybe second, uh, how, how's your experience uh, working with the local government uh, in, in, in your province? Because uh, in, your, in your background, uh, you, you, ha you have um, partnerships with the local government in terms of promoting uh, uh, rainwater harvesting. And uh, in, in your book also, uh, you mentioned, uh, it, it was mentioned there in the description that um, uh, you encountered several you know, uh, problems uh, dealing with government. I would, would like to hear more about that in terms of your relationship with the community and also your work with um, the local governments. And maybe I'll leave the rest to that. Okay. Uh, how we started rainwater harvesting. As I mentioned, uh, this technology is not a new technology. It's been there. And so we did not go out and teach people and tell them, hey, this is rainwater harvesting. You do this and you do that. No, we did not do that. What instead, we came up with a competition, a search actually, a search for best practice in rainwater management. So many people came up, this, their, their, their uh, farms and what they've been doing were documented and a group of uh, experts in, uh, in agriculture just rated this, uh, this uh, experiences, this rainwater harvesting. And then that started the sharing and then we made an input as to the fact that there's a need to do more. For example, there's a need for people to, for, for farmers, not uh, to understand the relationship between water and the, the service area. Like if they only have so much water because of the pond, because the pond is small, because it doesn't rain much, then the plant should adjust, they should adjust their crop. Maybe they don't have to plant rice, maybe they should plant corn instead, or at certain times of the year, they plant vegetables. So there was also an input from, from the experts. That's part of our IBO project with Ateneo. Now we, in the case of local government units, um, as I mentioned, there are eight towns inside the Tigum Aganan watershed. But when we did our work on trying to scale up rainwater harvesting and have that in, in the, and integrate the rainwater harvesting in their municipal development plan and in their annual investment plan, only five municipalities joined. And in fact, there are two municipalities which do different, different things from what we believe in. So you cannot do much. Uh, when we um, post questions, can you please um, let's uh, introduce ourselves and from uh, which institu institution did, do we come from before we post it? Uh, and also, can you please um, use the microphone because we have a spillover room uh, so that they can also hear what we are talking about in this room. Can you please come forward, sir? Or I, I will just. Uh, I'm Albert Almendralejo. I'm from San Beda, no? and we're working also with the Baseco community, trying to 
make uh, yeah some things with uh, social development and all that. I think what we're after, ma'am, are the details of mobili uh, mobilizing. No? This is a follow-up to that question earlier because basically you presented to us the problems and what you did to, well, solve or alleviate the problems in that area. But maybe what we are on the lookout for are the details of this mobili mobilizing. No? You said you had a radio program, and I think I'm sure that radio program was a big help. No? And the big question here is uh, how do you communicate all these things to the farmers? What were the instances? No? What were the mediums used? Uh, how did you communicate with the local government? No? How do you reach out to local government, to the communities, to the farmers, to media? What were the things that you did no, for you to be able to reach out to the governor and the vice governor for them to walk through that watershed uh, of yours and for them to fully support the program? No? I think these are basically what we're on the lookout for you know, because all of us are encountering different problems and uh, the issue of mobilization is actually uh, a big issue. You know? It's that uh, putting up a Christmas party and all that. You know? And uh, maybe we can get some ideas from you on these areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Regarding uh, mobilizing the local government unit, what we did first was to organize the the watershed management board watershed management board so that is now that that body comprised ngos agencies uh, government agencies local local government units and be, and the the project is owned by them what i did was to go get my connection and then get a project and the project is implemented and owned by this watershed board Regarding the, the community, we, have, we actually have um, meetings every week at the start, uh, especially for our, uh, for our project with the Ateneo. We have weekly meetings and, uh, with the farmers, then they document their, their experiences in the, using rainwater pond. They even have notebooks. And I think uh, twice, twice a year, we came up with a roundtable discussion. The farmers uh, came and talked with the agriculturists, the engineers, the people from NIA, people from the Department of Agriculture, and people from, from the local government province so, of ag agriculture. So, so, the, so the farmers don't feel that... Um, um, don't feel that they are, they are just doing these things um, just for the heck of it, that there is a basis for it, that the government is supporting it. Now, as to the media, I think we had one session. We had to get to have, we had one training session where we invited the local media. We also have uh, and another session for the municipal-based information officers of different agencies, for the Department of Agriculture, the DAR, and the PIA, with the PIA. So we really came up. We, I got, we got money from, from uh, the Philippine, Australia, uh, from the PACA project of uh, the Australian government. We won kasi the, the DIMP, the World Bank DIMP, our project on rainwater harvesting. So the money that we won, we used that to finance these activities. Yes. It may be an advantage in your case so that uh, you are from Iloilo and your project that you want to do something is also located in Iloilo. So it, in terms of communicating uh, with, uh, with the stakeholders, it might have, I don't know, if, is it really, is it advantageous uh, to you or is it also, are there problems that, uh, that you have encountered because you are from the area? Because I think uh, in, the, in the room, uh, some of us uh, would like to, uh, uh, initiate some changes in certain communities, but we are we are here from we are from Man most of us are from Manila, and uh, uh, in my other work, in, I have encountered some difficulties when we go to an area, for example, for mediation, and uh, we are mediators that would go to an area, and we are not from the area. There's a problem about acceptability uh, of the presence of people coming from. For example, if you want to go to Mindanao and you're from Manila, they say, oh, that's Imperial Manila. It's so hard for us to convince people to support what you want to do. So in your case, ano po ba yun? Ah, yun ba ay a pro or con sa inyo? It is said that no prophet 